think it's incredibly important that old buildings are saved and used in countries like New Zealand. There isn't, there isn't so much history that you can just knock it down and put apartment buildings up. It's just going to cost such a lot of money, so for ratepayers that's you know, going to be a big burden. I think it would be sad to lose it. It really is a bit of a heritage and I think too many really old, beautiful buildings get destroyed. No, it definitely needs to be saved. Uh, it's part of the uh, uh, Devonport heritage. So, uh, yeah, I think it's part of the uh, local attraction. I think the uh, theatre's, well, it's a, it's a great old building. It's a, it's a uh, landmark of Devonport, really. And we don't want to see things like that go at all. Oh, I think it should be, I think more funding should be given to the Victoria Theatre. I mean, it's there, it's got some history, and it's, um, you know, it's a resource. Um, it's, it should be kept, you know. With a huge fanfare, the Victoria Theatre opened on October 26, 1912. Built by visiting American John Benwell, the Victoria Theatre was the first purpose-built cinema on the North Shore. But its future's now in doubt and risks being demolished. Yeah, hi, my name is Greg and I'm going to tell you a bit about this picture that's, that's sitting here yeah. inside the Victoria Cinema. I don't know who did this picture, but um, it tells you the, the first screening ever of a movie inside this uh, magnificent building that I'm standing in at the moment. Sad day. October the 26th, 1912. That's when all these people decided to come together with a guy called Benwell. Now, he, now Benwell came out from Texas and he decided to build this little cinema here that's still existent um, today and it looks like a lot of important people are in there too all the local dignitaries and councillors and including the man himself Benwell that's him standing Showman and entrepreneur John Benwell arrived in New Zealand from California with his wife Mary and children in 1910. A few months later, he opened up his first picture theatre at the Old Federal Hall in Auckland's Wellesley Street West. He called it the American Theatre and then Benwell's Pictures. The Benwells settled down in Devonport's Allison Avenue later to be known as Ewan Allison Avenue, and opened up Benwell's Picture Palace in Clarence Street. The locals were worried that highly flammable film could lead to the building being burnt down, but Benwell assured anyone who would care to listen that everything would be just fine. The hall burnt to the ground on Christmas Eve 1911. With just £25 in his pockets, Benwell did what any entrepreneur would do. He borrowed more money to start again, this time from builder Edward James of Ponsonby. James not only built the Victoria Theatre, which cost more than £6,000, he was its mortgagee. If it all fell flat on its face, Benwell could wash his hands of the foul business knowing that he at least owned the land. Benwell, by all accounts, was a bit of a master showman. He had cage monkeys around the hall, free shows for children, and poetry competitions and lots of fundraising events for the local people. On 31st of May 1914, Benwell sold the theatre to Haywards. He had planned to return to the US, but World War I kept him in New Zealand. To pass the time away, he opened up a cinema in Whangarei and, on returning to Auckland, built the Royal Theatre in Kingsland. This is a far, far better thing I do now than I have ever done before. John Benwell left New Zealand by sea in 1918 with a fortune made in entertainment. When he arrived back home, he bought an oil well on the famous Signal Hill at Long Beach, which made him, his wife and three sons quite wealthy. But tragedy struck years later, when Benwell drove into the side of an electric streetcar, an accident he never fully recovered from. John Leon Benwell died on 17th of January 1934 at Eagle Rock, California, aged 69. 
two of Benwell's sons, Leon and Burton, made a return visit from the USA to Devonport in May 1962 to meet former school friends and take another look at the theatre their father built. In 1929, Fuller Haywards had the theatre remodelled and introduced new equipment for the onset of the talkies. The depression put the company out of business and the theatre went into the hands of debenture holders. Fuller's returned though and took the building over again until they eventually sold it in 1945 to Carriage Odeon. So what do you think North Shore City Council should do? Well I think they should buy it and to uh, upgrade it obviously inside um, and, or lease it and upgrade it and uh, make a proper entertainment uh, property out of it. Whether the council gets involved or not it's up to them but I, I would like to think it would pay its own way. My name is Doug Harley uh, Steve and um, my first visit to the Victoria Devonport was a projectionist back in 1943. When I um, rejoined Kerridge in, in 1958 from being in Christchurch, uh, they sent me to the Vic Devonport. Uh, the manager there at the time was a chap called Harry Thompson, who had run a circuit of cinemas down in Rapier Way, but he'd got, got a job with Kerridge so he was a manager, a very nice guy, and um, I was there from 1958 until 1963. Um, they were still Halican days because we still had run good movies to run, the place was full every Saturday night, and uh, if you didn't book your seats, well, you wouldn't get in. Um, it had a lovely uh, dark red curtains with, with a V on each side of the curtains, and uh, you had to pull that by rope in the projection room, and uh, it was recognised as one of the top houses, suburban houses, and because they got very first release off Queen Street. The movies we showed, Steve, uh, very popular. I'm trying to recall... Um, Picnic, um, Judgment at Nuremberg, um, Around the World in 80 Days. They were all very popular moves and therefore, you know, the Vic did wonderful business. We were showing a Western, one at 11 o'clock session, and uh, John Wayne Western, and uh, we got the wrong reel on somehow, and one minute uh, John, uh, John Wayne was dead, the next minute he was back firing a gun at the Indians going around in, in the wagon trains. They, they lost the plot, they start making you know, gratuitous violence and sex and sort of things. It's not entertainment, never can be, never will be. You know, we we had the beautiful musicals, the, the dramas. It was all fascinating stuff, and particularly the wonderful musicals with the dancing and the colour and the costumes and that sort of thing. It was entertainment. Oh, well, they bring back so many memories. They last forever. It's just such a shame that it's gone to what it has done. And I, that, that's the reason why people, you know, it's, it's, it's going down the gurgle. I love the way you say good night. The way you always whisper, honey, nighty night. It was just one of those things. Um, Devonport, as far as I know, is still... Uh, the main population is elderly. There's a lot of elderly people retired down there and they wouldn't be interested in, in the current movies and, uh, you know, what Hollywood's making. So bearing that in mind and indifferent uh, running the cinema by unskilled people, it just sort of all compounds and uh, business goes down the drain. When the, uh, the double job was done to make the Vic into two auditoriums, Bruce Palmer, um, who owned the whole place and spent a million quarter dollars doing them up, he put on a party for all the workers uh, in the, up in the lounge at the Vic and um, he, he bought uh, very expensive French champagne which was very very nice and that, at that particular gathering I was sitting next to Bruce Palmer's mother and a very nice lady and we got talking and so on and so on. Anyway she said to me, I told my son not to get mixed up with these silly show business people da 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 and uh, he'll be sorry and that's and unfortunately exactly what happened because of lack of knowledge of the, in, in the industry. Popcorn freshly popped and buttered. Mm -mm. Look good? Sure, it looks good and it tastes even better. Get some now. Businessman Bruce Palmer and former owner of Metro magazine thought long and hard before stepping in to buy the Victoria Theatre in 1990. We, we circularised the people of Devonport and the surrounding area. We asked uh, how many people 
wanted to see their cinema retained and restored and how many people in the local area would, would, would use it and go to the movies. And I think without exception, about everybody except 10 people in Devonport said yes, they'd love to see it restored and yes, they'd, they'd love to go to the movies there. And uh, I don't think many of them did. That was, that was the real problem. There just wasn't demand for the cinema in Devonport at all. Mm. I, I, never, I, never, I, I never really thought I was onto a winner. I mean, that, that wasn't the logic for going into it. I mean, it would have been nice to have at some time thought a lot of people are coming to the movies and people of Devonport are really getting into the cinema and I'm doing well out of it. Mm. But no, I didn't ever think that. Well, in, the, in those days it leaked and it was cold and it was it was very old. It hadn't it hadn't been refurbished or even looked at probably for twenty years. The the seating was in a bad condition. In fact, the inside was almost derelict. And I suppose that it was at the time when the cinema, the way cinemas were run, was changing, and multiplexes and multiple cinemas were becoming the vogue. And so, I suppose I thought it would be a good idea to try and see if it could be converted into a multiple cinema, as we did in the end. And also, a, a few local thespians approached me about the possibility of, of making a venue that could, you could have where they could have live theatre. Right. And so that was the incorporation of a, a flying screen, I think they call it, in the in the bottom cinema, where they could the, the locals could perform. We we subdivided up to two cinemas and we refurbished the entire cinema. Uh, I mean, we, we I think people worked on it for about nine months. Refurbishing it, there was a, a lot of people and a lot of work was done. It, it was a huge, huge <laughs> expense, and in the end, it was just too much expense to spend in Devonport. Mm -hmm. We would have been far better to have just bowled it over and turned it into apartments. <laughs> Since 1990, the theatre has had a roller coaster ride as different businesses have bought the theatre and campaign groups have formed to keep the theatre running as both a venue for films and live theatre. In 2004, David McAlpine's Kia Property Group bought the Victoria Theatre. The company loaned the building to the Vic Theatre Trust, which has been using it to run films. But crunch time came in 2005 when the Trust heard the theatre was back on the market again. This time, they asked the North Shore City Council to step in and buy the theatre. A year of debate later, councillors agreed to ask the people of Devonport what they should do. A referendum was to be held, giving residents three options. Option one was for the council to buy the theatre for one and a half million dollars. But Mayor George Wood was having second thoughts and wanted to backtrack. And I, I say this with respect to your office, Your Worship, but I'm, I'm very annoyed with you as the Mayor presenting a report as skinny as this. I, one of the options, as I understand it, Your Worship, would be for you to withdraw this motion at this time and allow us to get on with business. Um, have you considered doing that, Your Worship? Because you, when you spoke, well, no, yeah. I'll tell you, no, I haven't. I haven't. Well, perhaps you wish you might like to. I, I, on your, well, on your... you, you make your speech. I mean, you're not there to question me. Uh, my it seems the owners of the theatre, the Kia Property Group, had written to the council saying they were preparing to put the property on the open market. They had waited long enough for a council decision, and Mayor Wood's last minute delay in tactic was the last straw for the company and many supporters of the Vic Theatre in that the offer has been there for a year and we are still drawing this out. After about an hour of debate, those of us on the sidelines thought the vote had been taken for the referendum to go ahead and we all started to leave. Just then, a council officer came out and said it was only George's motion that had been voted on and that the vote for the referendum had not yet been taken. What's he saying? He's saying that um, that, that that was just the mayor's procedural motion to try and throw the whole uh, consultative process out, and now they've got to go back and um, and go through the, the procedure properly. So we're all a bit at sea, but we'll um, hopefully normal business will resume shortly. <laughs> I thought I'd leave the important business of voting to the councillors and nip down to the Vic Theatre to see its latest supporter, Tim Finn.
Uh, well, I just helped at the initial stage. I just went along to council and, um, and added, a, I suppose, a novelty value to the whole pitch um, and, a, and a bit of intensity, perhaps, and, and uh, a profile with the media, you know, gave it a lot. Uh, the media kind of became a bit more interested, perhaps, in the last stage where they, they you know, there was something in the Herald and there was something in the TV and there was this, that and the other. It started to pop up all over the place and I suppose that was partly because I suddenly became involved at the last stage. I hadn't done anything prior much but I got involved in that last stage and uh, with Sarah who's running the trust and, you know, it was fun and it was exciting and it, and it, it seemed to play a part, you know. You know, I think they did do the right thing. They, they sort of stood up and said, well, this, is, this should belong to the community. You can own it. Um, but of course they now have the power to flick it on or do whatever they like and so there's all these different stages that have to happen but um, I think it's going to have a, a covenant put on it that it will always have to remain as a theatre so that's a major victory. We'd, uh, when Split End started back in the early um, 70s there was a theatre in downtown Auckland called His Majesty's and that was a wonderful space to perform in you know and, and they ripped that out um, in the 80s and it was really sort of underhand and kind of the guy that did it went bust and just ended up turning it into a car park eventually, I think. But yeah, it was just a sad, sorry tale and I, I just, I love old theatres and so having had my sort of um, awareness heightened by that incident with His Majesty's, I became, I suppose, more interested in this one and trying to sort of help this one along, you know. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, I think something is happening. As soon as city councillors had voted in favour of holding a referendum, Sarah Burren and supporters of the Vic began a campaign to encourage North Shore residents to vote for option one, for the council to buy the Vic Theatre. to build national awareness for Victoria Theatre. We feel that it's got a lot of people behind it in Devonport. We're trying to reach people in Glenfield, Birkenhead, Wellington, Ekatahuna, to realise that this is a real gem in New Zealand. Its heritage should be kept. Victoria Theatre has turned 93 years old. This can become the most amazing, vibrant, multicultural centre. It's here forever for future generations. Now, why is it important that we should be purchasing the Vic Theatre? Three reasons. One is, is the heritage aspects to it. It's the oldest dedicated cinema in the Southern Hemisphere and the second oldest in the world. And once we lose it, we lose it forever. No, I mean, it's particularly North Shore, but is it like any a, comments is it, from you Is it like a petition? Yeah. We've got the wonderful Roger Wall here. All over the country, yeah, over the last few decades, uh, various city councils have let theatres fall into disrepair and then they realise later on what treasures they have and they spend a lot of money doing them up. It's keeping it running, it just keeps breaking down. It's so bloody old and been sitting around for so long. Yeah. It's about 50 grand to get a brand new plant. Here we have a theatre that certainly needs work, but it is in pretty good condition uh, in, in, in that it can be used straight away. And it would be a tragic loss to see it go and uh, into some other use. Any theatre that's more than 50 years old should just be automatically um, preserved. You know, this is a lot of um, a lot of magic and atmosphere just in the in the space that that is there for any performer to just walk in and use. You know, mm. I think yeah, it'd be great to have it here for the future. You know, for our kids and and I'd love to come down here as an old man and sing. You know. A lot of movies, a lot of laughter, a lot of comedy, a lot of history, and a lot of people. A lot of projections, and you're shooting me. It's good. It, it, it's just something that, you know, movies, film, um, and w working at theatres like this, um, it changes you. It just... It, it, it's, it's good, it's a good feeling. Film festivals, just wonderful, seeing all those actors out there. 
coming through our cameras. I, I don't feel the energy to step into the theater to save it. I think it has potential to save itself. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds weird maybe, you know, because we have to do things, you know, we have to make decisions, but this theater is not so... Yeah, it just doesn't appeal to me that I have to step in to, to save the theater. It's too old for me, you know. I'm only 33, I don't know, it sounds crazy, but that, all, that theater is so old, I think it can, could, look, could look after itself, you know. As you can see, this is all marble, all, all right up into the theatre. It's quite, a, quite unique, actually. It's very good. Um, we go up into the top part of it here. And this was the upstairs part. This is if you paid three and six or something. You paid a couple of bob more to come and sit up in here. Unfortunately, it's pretty dark in here. But the original sides, that's, that's the original. This is history made 1912. The first purpose-built cinema in the world. This is the history of this building to save it. But it's going to take one and a half million dollars to actually buy the building. Who should pay for that? Well... Didn't actually show movies, turned them all by hand in them days, wow. keeping up yeah. to show these <laughs> things for about 20, 20 minutes long. Yeah. Hard work. Yeah, it was. Must be a fit bloke. Oh, yeah, in them days, <laughs> must have been fit, yeah. Well, a strong right arm anyway. Yeah, yeah well, left arm or right arm, whatever they do. There was a lady who taught piano lessons over in Kerr Street here on the other side of the school, and I actually, when I was about 14 or 15, I actually talked to her. And she told me that she was the original, used to play the piano in the silent days in the theatre. Yeah, she, she said that they, that wasn't the original theatre, she said that one of them burnt down, and then they transferred down to the old church, Anglican Church Hall, which is still down in Church Street, and she was down there for a while playing, until this was rebuilt again. Now that, that's the stories, and other people have told me that, yes, it did happen, because where they put the generators, for the arc lamps, is, the block is still outside the, or inside the hall, on the side of the hall somewhere. There's a block that they built to put the generator on mm -hmm. to run the power. I remember a, an so, old electrician telling me actually about that. So that block down at the, uh, the hall, that, that wouldn't be there unless it had been used for a cinema? No, no. If, if you go into that hall, if you go and have a look on the outside of the hall, you can see a part that's been put onto it, and that's where the projection box was put, oh. on the outside of the building. Well, here we are in Church Street and the site of the old parish hall. Between 1924 and 1925, films were shown here. And looking at the building, you can see it fits perfectly to being a great temporary cinema and hundreds of people would have turned up during the course of the year to see movies of the day. Just at the front door of the parish hall is this room and that is where the old projector would have sat. And just down here by the foot of the door is the concrete base. The generator would have been rumbling, power would come from this point here, just a short distance to on the other side of these doors where the projector sat, showing films to a screen at the far end. These are arc rods that would have been pushed together or just held together like this and creating a huge spark which would have been used in a projector to give the light to show the film and these were found in the earth around the building so I think it's more evidence that a projector was definitely used here that's what I've understood for years and I've lived here about 55 years in Devonport so you know because other people will say it never burnt down. They, they've done surveys and there's no evidence of um, any smoke damage. So No, it was completely rebuilt. That's probably why. It probably was an old wooden building. Yes, we've heard there was a fire here in 1924. 
Um, it's in that wonderful old cinema book too. Um, heritage architect who looked around this building was literally crawling in the bowels of the building, found no evidence of fire, but then if a fire was that um, robust and it had indeed burnt to the ground, surely there would be a documented gazette or something from the time and some sort of archival footage somewhere, but there's no picture in the fact that the paper or the gazette that was attached to the building still went on. Surely there would have been something in there talking about the fire. So it's part of the myth, part of its urban myth, part of the ghost. It's part of the ghost, Steve. I thought Sarah Barron had a good point about the old Devonport Gazette and so hopped over to Auckland City Library's archive department. Staff there found copies of Devonport's free weekly newspaper for the whole of 1924 and 1925. The paper was run from within the Vic Theatre and so advertised the theatre's films on the front page. Going through each edition, I could see that week by week, the front pages from all of 1924 and 25 advertise films being shown at the Vic. There's no mention of films at the Parish Hall or the Midway or of a fire. The Parish Hall was definitely used to show films when the Vic closed down for major reconstruction in 1929. Among the movies shown included Children of the Ritz, Rex the Wonder Horse and Laurel and Hardy. Well, that's that. No use crying over split milk. We bring you this special radio television broadcast in order to give you the very latest information on an amazing phenomenon. At a cost of $80,000, more than 95,000 leaflets were sent out across the North Shore asking residents to pick one of three options. From the leaflets sent out, just 4,579 were returned, with 70% favouring option one. The trust had won. The council was now bound to buy the theatre. Then, in a surprising about turn, Mayor George Wood voted in favour of buying the Victoria Theatre, making the council decision unanimous. On July 14, 2006, North Shore City Council paid $1.55 million for the Victoria Theatre, with almost half a million dollars coming from the Naranek Endowment Fund. A new chapter in the history of one of the country's most historic theatres had begun and work immediately got underway improving the building for future generations of theatre and film goers. I think John Benwell would be pleased. You know, what's going on now with the theatre here. Yeah. But it's been the most amazing project and um, hopefully we'll be able to continue to make it like that and keep it moving forward in the right direction. And I think that it's great that the council has bought the theatre. It's sort of one of those two-edged swords. We don't want our rates to go up. We don't want to be paying the money. But at the same time, it's an important landmark of Devonport and it's a wonderful building. We've only got about uh, six or seven years and this theatre uh, will have its first centenary. Buildings like this attract yeah. the, you know, the quirk. Yeah. So that's where I'm going to leave it, yeah. Anyway.